Welcome to Broadway Corner with Ashley Haw, where you can listen to your favorite performers talk about their career, how they got started, and everything in between. Make sure to follow me at Broadway Corner with Ashley Haw on Instagram and also my main Broadway account at Broadway underscore Corner for updates on new episodes. Hope you enjoy! Hi everyone, welcome back to Broadway Corner with Ashley Haw. I'm so happy you're here and today we are talking to a very talented singer-songwriter who captures the feeling of an overworked, like overachieving Asian American kid perfectly and she also has like the coolest hair. It's Catherine Lynn Rose! (laughs) Thank you so much for having me Ashley! Yes, of course. So excited to talk to you all about your songwriting journey and about Canada's Got Talent. And so for a bit of background and a little bio, Catherine Shu, known as Catherine Lynn Rose, is a 19-year-old Chinese-Canadian singer-songwriter passionate about Asian representation in musical theater. Her viral song, Top of My School, has accumulated over 4 million streams across Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. As a burnt-out theater kid obsessed with validation, Catherine draws inspiration from her experience growing up in North America and in an Asian immigrant household. So welcome, Catherine. <laughs> Hi, I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, so um, yeah, again, just so happy to talk to you. And I guess we'll just start right away. And just can you talk about your background? Like where, where'd you grow up? Where'd you go to school? And when did you discover songwriting and I guess Broadway theater performing? <laughs> Yeah, so I grew up in Burlington, Ontario. Um, It's a pretty like suburban little town. And growing up, I was really shy. And so my mom signed me up for like singing classes to try and get me out of my shell. And surprisingly, it worked. And after that, she signed me up for musical theater. And I was immediately hooked. I love theater so much. Did it all throughout like middle school, high school, um, high school plays, and also community theater outside of school. And it was really when COVID hit that I realized I wanted to do more writing and rather than just performing. So when COVID hit, obviously like all of the plays I was in, all the musicals, everything got canceled. And so no more performing. And that was really my creative outlet because so much of my time had been consumed by like academics and trying to be the best in school and everything. So theater was really my escape. And because of COVID, I really lost that. And so, I decided to write some stuff myself. Um, also influenced by all of the rise in a- anti-Asian hate crimes going on during the time and realizing that there really is a severe lack of Asian representation in the musical theater in the musical theater industry in general. Um, the yeah, few shows that we have, <laughs> yeah, the few shows we do have are, are very much like white savior trope and stuff. So I was like, you know what? The representation isn't there. I'm gonna write it myself. Mm -hmm. Um, And I even growing up, I didn't really think that theater was the direction for me because I was grown up, growing up, I was always told like, oh, you're never going to make it in the entertainment industry. If you want to do musical theater, the only role you can play is Mulan. Um, And I really internalized that. And then so during COVID, I was like, well, then I'm going to write myself a lead. (laughs) I'm going to write myself a show that I can star in. Um, And yeah, I was beyond excited to be posting some of my original stuff on TikTok and surprisingly it resonated with a lot of people and yeah I'm just very grateful and glad that I have the platform I have today. (laughs) Yeah yeah definitely I mean you and I are both I think similar in terms that we're Asian American you know kids trying to like pursue the theater industry uh, musical theater industry and trying to break out of the mold of being told that you can only be Mulan or like in Miss Saigon or The King and I well now we have K-pop so that's different but (laughs) now we're trying to really just just break out of those shells that we've been in for so long and I mean all your songs are so beautiful and like if you if people who are listening have not heard them like you need to listen to them immediately because they're just great and then with you like you you include a lot of BIPOC like artists also in your ensemble um and you make sure to really just highlight them which is so amazing and so what inspired you to pursue like begin songwriting yeah so I mean I've always been a music nerd I grew up singing and musical theater and everything um and I really didn't think there was many songs that told the story that I would personally resonate with. You know, most of the stuff you hear on the radio is like 
about breakups and love or like drugs <laughs> and I was like I don't I don't feel that I don't relate to any of that well um, I feel the same way <laughs> I was like this is a bop but I don't resonate with this at all um so I decided to write stuff that I personally felt told my story and I was really surprised that it resonated with a lot of other people too not only in like North America but also in the Philippines I think it went viral in the Philippines I was oh. like, hey, y'all thanks um, but yeah I really like I would say I'm pretty much like an amateur I don't know what I'm doing I started in COVID with my parents garage band on their iPad um I didn't have a fancy setup or anything and I just kind of ran with it I just kind of was like that sounds good let me record it and people seem to like it and now I'm always trying to work on improving my producing skills and writing skills but mm -hmm. yeah, it's definitely a skill I'm still working on mm -hmm. I know I mean like for me I feel like the same way with you where you feel underrepresented in in just the pop industry or musical theater industry where it's just like okay I don't see myself in that so what am I supposed to do um but like I could not imagine trying to like write something I don't know I've like thought about it and then I just went okay no I don't know what to what to do um <laughs> but it's I like, like to say I'm a very no. spiteful person huh I'm sorry I what was I'm a very spiteful person so I was like <laughs> nothing's there for me <laughs> well I'm gonna write it myself <laughs> like it or not <laughs> yeah, yeah fix your own problems yeah. um and like what inspires like the content of your songwriting of just what you're really talking about yeah so um I'm a child of immigrants and I really uh, that has influenced a lot of my life growing up um, my parents immigrated from China to Canada in the early 2000s and I have an older brother um, he's sort of like the golden child. He's got a six-figure STEM job, whatever, um, all fancy. He's got a baby now, all set. And I'm here studying, performing, and media arts. <laughs> so it's it's definitely been a lot of me drawing from my personal experiences, um, mainly during high school, trying to thrive on academic achievement and realizing that the root of that is really just because of all the pressure I've built on myself and also the pressure that my parents may have subconsciously built on me as well. Mm -hmm. um, and like my brother and everything too, it's very much the context of, oh, so this is the person who's the top of her school, she has everything together, but here there's a layer underneath that and she really is just chasing for love and affection all the time and numbers define her life yeah um yeah yeah I know for me in high school I'm I'm a senior now and so I, I remember like freshman year it's like I'm gonna you know be be perfect and like I've still had you know decent grades and, and really good grades but it's like okay I don't need to be fit, taking five APs I'm like that's too much for me especially going into musical theater um, <laughs> and like for you I, I know that like I think it was um last year Broadway Con you said that your your parents allowed you to switch your major Mm -hmm. um, because you go to Cornell and so what was what was that journey like of you know getting to college for something that maybe you didn't want to do and then ending up to finally like finally being able to switch to something you're passionate about mm -hmm. so basically um I applied to universities during COVID and everything and I also applied out of spite I do everything out of spite basically, <laughs> remember how my brother's the golden child and everything He's 12 years older than me. So 12 years ago, he applied for Cornell University and he didn't get in. And so when it came time for me to apply for universities, my dad was like, don't even bother looking at Cornell. Your brother didn't get in, so you can't get in. There's no way. Like, like David didn't get in, you can't. David couldn't do it, so neither could you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, wanna bet? <laughs> Is that a challenge? And so I applied and guess who got in and proved my dad wrong. <laughs> I got in with an uh, anticipated like major, double major in math and music. And first semester, it was fine. I was mostly doing like general requirements, like language, um, writing seminars. But when I came time to spring semester, I was the lowest, I, like I was at the lowest mentally I've ever been in my entire life. I was not having it. I was failing my math classes. I was struggling to get up out of bed in the morning. 
Um, and I was actually put on academic probation at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. And that was really a wake up call for me and my parents because they realized what's the point if you're going to be unhappy for the rest of your life? I'm tearing up now. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> and so they did something that, that felt really out of character for me. Whoa. I'm going to stop crying during interviews. Okay. <laughs> They did something that was really out of character, um, and they were like, you know what, Catherine, we really just want you to graduate. You're at Cornell. You'll get a job no matter what you do. Study what you love. Do performing and media arts. And I was like, oh my God, who are you? And what have you done with my parents? <laughs> <laughs> and so I switched, and I'm thriving right now. My classes are so fun. I'm actually really enjoying what I'm learning. And mm -hmm. so that was a huge turning point in my life. Stop crying. <laughs> No, it's okay. Don't worry. It's the, this is like our safe, you know, little safe place to just talk about our lives and, and what we're, you know, what we're passionate about. And I mean, that you're the fact that you're so happy now studying something that you do like. I mean, that's that's just the best to hear to hear about. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I am applying to be a BFA musical theater major. And so mostly like you know, around New York and stuff. And so I'm like, if you're ever in the, if I move to New York and you're ever in the city, like, hit me up. <laughs> Many times throughout the year. I love New York. I travel there as much as I possibly can. <laughs> yeah, it's no, so much fun. But I'm so happy to hear that you're just thriving now and that you get to study something that you love, which is, it's, it's great. It's amazing. Um, and do you have a favorite lyric that you've ever written? Like something that when you read it, you're like, oh my gosh, I did that. <laughs> That's a really good question. I don't know. Um, I think some of my favorite lyrics are from a song I haven't released yet. Oh um, no. <laughs> a Basically, spoiler alert, um, the song is about my relationship with my mom. Um, growing up, there was always a language barrier. Um, because she was from China. And so the only way we really connected was through media. And so she would always sit and watch my favorite shows with me. And there was sort of this accepted comfort in silence. Um, but there's also this longing, I'm gonna cry again. Oh my God. <laughs> there's also this longing underlying feeling like, I know that you won't say I love you, but I just want, sometimes I really just want to hear those words. I know that you love me, but sometimes it, should, it would just be great if you could say it. Mm -hmm. ah! <laughs> um, because saying I love you is very uncommon in Chinese culture. It's very much like, oh, it's too cheesy. We don't say I love you. Yeah, we do it through action. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, like my mom shows it by watching TV with me for hours in a language that she's not proficient in. Um, and yeah, I think one of the lyrics was like, there's a special sort of silence. Um, what is it? There's a special sort of silence. And we both know what it means. Mm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't, I'm so excited to hear it. I mean, we'll get to talking about Canada's Got Talent in a little bit, but um, yeah, just like the things that you write about, Catherine, is just, it's so beautiful. And when you hear it, like I, I'm in that one one part that went like mega viral. Um, like, but if I had earned a dollar, what would you think of yeah. your daughter? <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it just hits you, and you're like, what? Oh my god! Like, I didn't know that those emotions were like gonna come out. I mean, for me, I think my parents are a little bit like abnormal for Asian parents, cause like they're actually very supportive of me okay. and going through the words and like you know we do say I love you but and stuff and like trying to just like break the norm <laughs> like break the cycle because it's so it, it's hard to hear when people just you know obviously people Chinese people love to do things through actions through food love to do but it's like you know with grandparents or something it's just it's hard to like have such a disconnect where you're connected but so disconnected at the same time and so yeah we're gonna we're gonna keep trying to break yeah. those things together oh. because I think a loving world is always always much better um <laughs> and and since it went so viral your songs like what did, what did it mean to you to have such a great platform on um like TikTok and YouTube and sorry for everyone listening I'm coughing because I had pneumonia and valley fever so 
<laughs> we're struggling a little bit, but it's okay. We're still here. <laughs> Better. <laughs> um, what was the question again? I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's like with your communities on TikTok and YouTube, like how how much fun is it to have those and what does it mean to you have to have that support? Yeah, it's definitely not what I expected. You know, I was one of those people who was like, TikTok, I'm not going to be one of those guys who downloads TikTok. That's a waste of time. And then COVID happened and I was like, I'm going to make it a goal to become TikTok famous by the end of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then so I started posting on TikTok. I was like, I'm so grateful. And TikTok is such a safe space, in my opinion. Um, you can really just like put your stuff out there and it can be anyone. You don't need a label. You don't need all these connections to get your stuff seen because the For You page really just like boosts it to everyone. At least back in the day, it did. <laughs> yeah, not for me, not for me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it really got your stuff out there to a lot of viewers and whoever resonated with would stay and then follow you and stuff. Um, and it's, it's been great. I met so many incredible musical theater friends and also singer songwriter friends through TikTok. They're so talented. Um, a lot of them sing in the ensemble of my songs. Um, yeah, and YouTube, I've been doing YouTube for a while. I've been doing covers since before COVID and stuff. Um, but it was really after I did my original stuff that I felt like my YouTube was more me and less me singing other people's songs. Because again, I didn't really resonate with a lot of the other songs I was singing. I was just like, I'm going to sing a song and put it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really great to be recognized for who you are and the art you are creating originally. Um, and to have that community of people who share similar experiences. Like if you go through my top of my school YouTube comments, I'm so concerned for everyone. Everyone's like <laughs> writing paragraphs and like trauma dumping about like their family experience. I'm like, guys, oh, like, thanks for streaming, but like, are y'all okay? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. It's really great for like finding people who have similar experiences as you and realizing that you're not alone. Yeah. Um, and there's, it's gonna get better. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look at you now. You're you're thriving. <laughs> um, and like when you when you write a song or you release a song out in the world and people get to see it, like what is your biggest hope or something that you hope people will take away from it? I think like I hope that the biggest takeaway from my music is that like there are so many stories that can be told. Um, everyone has their own story, um, but some stories just don't get told because you know the industry is so dominated by people who don't look like us and so I just really want to the big takeaway to be there are so many interesting stories um, from so many different cultures different people with different experiences everyone has their own story to tell and no matter how personal your story can be it can also be universal um, like I didn't expect to my school to resonate with people from the Philippines because I wrote it in the perspective of like a typical like you know american immigrant child student yeah <laughs> like chinese parents or something but then it went like people play it in school in the philippines and i was like not expecting that sort of um connection to that song and yeah i just want people to realize that we can be telling our own stories and there will be people who listen it's yeah. not unmarketable Mm -hmm. I know and we can and you know we can write it ourselves too and share our own experiences through through things that we know because people always say write what you know it's like okay then let me write what I know <laughs> <laughs> let me write what I've experienced mm -hmm. um I mean as you know a Taiwanese American girl in California like it's such a it's such a specific experience of trying to either be academically valid or you know artistically valid to other people but it's like okay we can all kind of take those experiences and relate to them it's not like i mean i think we saw that with a strange loop people could see themselves in something so like so specific but it's so broad at the same time and i think that's what people really saw in your music um and i don't know it's just it's just amazing <laughs> oh, <so much. laughs> And can you tell us about when you went like viral and like what that experience was like? Um, I, I mean, was it, was it immediate or did it kind of gradually build up? I think it was kind of gradual, but there's definitely like a spike when I look at my Spotify like mm -hmm. history. 
it was around the same time as I released Price of Perfection, my second song, that Top of My School was really popping off in the Philippines oh. specifically. <laughs> and I, don't really, I still don't know why. The Philippines loves you. It's okay. Yeah, I still don't know why. Like, slay y'all. Thanks. I think they're like, they make up more than 50% of my YouTube, like, viewers right now. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, very supportive. <laughs> yeah. Um, basically, I think it, they're also, it keeps spiking, like, at random times. And I'm like, is it, like, exam season in the Philippines right now? Like, is it back to school season? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Like maybe maybe something specific or maybe it's just completely random. I really don't know. Um, I just remember when I started seeing like a little peak. I was like, okay, I gotta I gotta be marketing. I gotta TikTok every day. We gotta we gotta be doing all those stupid trends and like make all these audio sounds on the TikTok so that people can try and like ramp it up even more. Um, but yeah, it really was out of nowhere. I don't know what happened, but I'm so grateful. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's crazy what what YouTube can do. I mean, like with my family, none of us have really had anything like go viral ever, except for like this one video that my mom has. And like people will still comment on it, even though it was from like two years ago. And yeah. it's like, algorithms are so weird and I have no idea how they work, but they do. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It was like so random. <laughs> Yeah, and now I think we need to talk a bit about Canada's Got Talent, which is the show that you're going to be on. Um, and so when did you first audition? How did you hear about it? What was your first experience going in and, and just your experience being on the show? <laughs> yeah, so I was actually, my, the choice for me to submit my like virtual audition was super last minute. I was actually just looking at my old audition videos like yesterday. It's all filmed in the dark with like an LED light and like my computer as like my ring light because it was so dark and it was like midnight or something and I was like you know what I'll just submit it and it was very much on the fly I was in my room I submitted my videos um because basically for many years my mom's always been like Catherine you gotta like put yourself out there submit to like Jungle Hao Xinying like China Idol submit to like these shows and I'm always like no <laughs> but then my best friend grace she was like Catherine, canada's got talent you gotta submit you gotta submit and she was like nagging me and i was like i mean i guess <laughs> fine and then when i heard back i was so surprised and we filmed our my audition back in what was it october and it, i've just been so grateful to be a part of the journey i've like never been on tv nothing like that i the fanciest thing i've done was like community theater in Burlington, Ontario. And so <laughs> it was like very like drastic going to like a professional like production like set and everything and having producers and people talk to you about like creative concepting and like doing all these fancy interviews. I was like, oh my gosh, I feel kind of famous right now. <laughs> and it was really, it was really great. Um, the team has been super supportive in trying to like bring my vision to life with my audition. I know a lot of these like talent voice shows, they get a bad rep because it's like a lot of things are scripted and a lot of people come in not ending up doing what they wanted to do. People try and like, get framed in a bad light. Like, but I had an incredible experience on CGT. I everyone was very accommodating. And if I brought up a suggestion for like creative direction, they would like fully listen to me. And they, they actually like most of the time asked me what my ideas were first mm -hmm. um, before like pitching, like for example, like song ideas, um, they would come to me first. And I was like, I really appreciate those guys. <laughs> um, and is it like, are you, is your audition gonna be like debuting a new song? <laughs> Um, my audition. Hi, I can only take that request while you're listening to music or a podcast. <laughs> Why are you here? Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess you'll just have to like watch my audition to see what I sing. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, like, how can we how can we support that journey of being on Canada's Got Talent and I guess watch it and vote for you if the you know let's we'll see how it works <laughs> yeah it goes we'll see how it goes um i will be posting a lot about it on my instagram and tiktok so i would say follow me there to know when my episode airs and everything um i'm gonna be supporting the entire season so the season premiere is march 21st on city tv i'm gonna be watching all the episodes feel free to join me if you would like um but don't worry i will be letting everyone know when my actual episode comes out um 
yeah, and I hope if you can stream it, I think they're posting clips on YouTube, but I would love it if people could. I think basically City TV, there's like a prime, like a prime subscription, and then you get like a trial with City TV. I'm not really sure. But if you <laughs> can watch it. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Just follow <laughs> Catherine and, yeah, and it'll be okay. I'll let y'all know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for you, Catherine, like what is your what is your dream as a songwriter? I oh my gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> I feel like I have so many aspirations and goals I want to do that there's like not enough time to get them all done, but I will manifest <laughs> it will get done. Um, one, like I would love to be like a touring artist, like like Taylor Swift, what Taylor Swift is doing right now. So cool. But I would also <laughs> love to like be behind the scenes and work on like a completely original Broadway musical because at the end of the day, theater is my route, like my home. Um, music is just kind of like what it ended up transforming into and I love both so much and so it I find it always super struggling to have to like choose between the two I call my genre musical theater pop and there's not many other artists who do the same thing so it's hard to pitch to like Spotify playlists because it's not really a genre right now similarly yeah. with like Broadway and stuff right now most of my songs are singles they're not like in the form of a cast album with multiple characters um so it's also hard to like work on that but I would love to do all of the above <laughs> we'll see how things go I just I just know I want to be in New York <laughs> yeah, I do too we can we can hang out and just do everything to you know in New York <laughs> the, the, big, the big city um <laughs> And, you know, talking about representation, we're both like, you know, well, I'm Taiwanese, you're Chinese, you know, American artists. And so what does representation mean to you? Representation matters so much. I think it was very, mm, what's the word? People are getting better at realizing how much representation matters nowadays, but growing up, it was very much not thought of at all. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I grew up watching Barbie, Disney princesses, my token one Mulan. <laughs> um, and there really wasn't much for us growing up. Um, and we're getting better, but I think there's definitely a lot to improve on. Um, representation is not only just seeing people who look like you on stage, but also seeing people who look like you behind the scenes, mm -hmm. writing, directing. Um, because, you know, what's the point if the people of color are just like puppets on stage? and are just directed by a bunch of white men who don't understand the cultural significance of anything like it's just it's so important to have representation that is we can see and also don't necessarily always see mm -hmm. um yeah i it's uh it's it's definitely like one of the main things i'm always like bringing back and like so many of the things I'm doing in my like school essays, I'm always like representation, representation matters. Yeah, me too. <laughs> like, get everything everywhere all at once. It's like a proof that like the immigrant story is marketable. Like it's not, so many people use the excuse of like, oh, not everyone's gonna understand like this really specific cultural story. But that movie is just like proof that you can make a story universal, but also so important towards a certain group of people who just never had their story told. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think that, yeah, everything everywhere all at once kind of showed everyone like, okay, we're here, we can do this. You know, we can we can make our own stuff. And, you know, Helen Park being the first Asian, like, you know, composer on Broadway, hopefully, like a lyricist, and maybe Catherine could be the second. <laughs> <laughs> and you know representation means so much i know to both of us and to so many other asian american people of just you know if you see it you can believe it and then you can want to do it because i think that's what happened to both of us where we saw theater and we were like okay maybe we can do this like maybe we can try to be be something that we love like do something that we love um yeah, and we're trying to, you know, study it at school and, and working towards those dreams because, you know, we can make them come true. I believe in us. Yeah, <laughs> Manifest <gotta> everything. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So, Catherine, anything, any last things you want to say to everyone listening? Um, if you're if you're an aspiring singer, songwriter, or performer out there and you have any doubts, just full send. Post on TikTok. I don't know. You never know what could happen. You never know who might see it. <laughs> <You're> viral. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like you, 
don't try not to limit yourself is what I'm saying like I very much could have done what I've been doing the past like many years and just not have auditioned for Canada's Got Talent but I did it and I'm so proud of myself for doing it because it's out of my comfort zone but I'm putting myself out there um and getting my stuff seen and I know there's so many stories that need to be told and if you think you have one please please share it yeah yeah that's great thank you so much and Thank you, Catherine, for being on the pod today. So, so great to to see you again and just talk about your journey as an artist. I'm so, so happy and just excited to see where everything goes for you. I mean, you're at Cornell. You're going to be on Canada's Got Talent. You've got so much stuff going for you. Um, <laughs> and thank you to everyone listening um, for listening to Broadway Corner of the Ashley Haw. Make sure you follow me at Broadway Corner of the Ashley Haw and Broadway underscore Corner. And make sure also to follow Catherine I don't remember what your handle is, but I will link it in the descriptions. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. You've been listening to Broadway Corner with Ashley Haw. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. <laughs>